the Yellow Dog Plains, sits in the middle of the Michigami Highlands. And the Yellow Dog Plains is a jack pine barrens that has a very high elevation in relationship to Lake Superior and its surrounding terrain. It's very flat, it's very sandy, and its current use is basically as a managed tree farm. The Yellow Dog Plains is also a place of wild beauty, of large mammals such as cougar, bear, moose, deer, and it's surrounded by wetlands and surrounded by wilderness areas. So it's just a very rare piece of the world that hasn't been developed yet. It has one road, one dirt road that goes through the middle of it that in the winter is used as a snowmobile trail and the rest of the year um, it's access for folks to get out there to recreate. It's really a large recreation area. This morning we're conducting one of our uh, weekly surveys of fish on the spawning sites. So we, we count the number of fish, their relative size, and we record any of their behaviors. A coaster brook trout is a brook trout that leaves its river where it was spawned and goes out into Lake Superior and generally grows big before it comes back up river to spawn again. The female does the initial work by digging a red, which is the nest where these fish are gonna lay their eggs. And then once she lays her eggs, the males fertilize those eggs. And then the eggs are covered over with gravel and they develop under that gravel for some time through the winter. The habitat needs of a coaster brook trout population are twofold. Certainly they need high quality lake habitat with good clean water, but they also need clean running and exposed gravel substrate in, in the rivers. Coaster brook trout in the Salmon Trout River in, in some respects have endured uh, threats and impacts um, since the early 1800s, starting with, with fishing um, and introduced species. Um, and certainly in the early history of this area, um, extensive logging uh, change the landscape, alter the watershed, further hindering coaster brook trout. You could almost think of coaster brook trout enduring the last several hundred years of impacts. There are certain current new threats on the horizon for coaster brook trout um, and their restoration, and certainly one of those um, is the potential mine in the headwaters of salmon trout. That is just about the worst location you could choose for a sulfide mine because it's underneath the Salmon Trout River uh, and empties into Lake Superior, which is a resource um, we all care deeply about, whether you live here or not. The UP is no stranger to mining. We have a lot of iron mining here in the UP, um, right in the same area. And that has oxide ores. It doesn't have sulfide in the rock. And so you can go to a, a regular iron mine, and what you'll see is a lot of dust in the air, a lot of water everywhere. And they'll take the rock, they'll blast it, they'll go down with big trucks, they'll pull it up, they'll crush it, and you have all of this dust flying everywhere. Sulfide mining is hard rock mining. It's called sulfide mining because the rock comes up from the surface. It has all kinds of iron sulfides in it, copper sulfides in it, and the unique quality of that rock hitting air and water starts creating something called sulfuric acid. Even the most modern sulfide mines pollute. It's happened at the Flambeau Mine in Wisconsin. It has occurred at the Greens Creek Mine in Alaska and there's nothing so different being proposed at this particular site that we believe it would be any different here. I think there needs to be a, a very good track record showing that this approach by this group um, 
has, has the history of, of doing no harm to the watershed and the downstream ecosystems. Coaster brook trout are rare at, at two levels. And on one level, they're rare in the number of streams that still host populations, so spatially they're rare. But in, in another way of looking at, the populations themselves are small, so the remnant populations are probably all in a matter of hundreds of individuals in that spawning population. Um, anything that we can do to help uh, conditions persist as they are and improve into the future, I think is necessary. Clearly the proponents of the mine stand to make a lot of money off of the mine. And so their arguments are economic and uh, are focused on jobs in the state of Michigan. However, this mine is proposed only to employ about 75 local people, hardly a boon. Uh, and we know that over time, the economic benefits of mines are actually quite short-lived and don't extend past the life of the mine. We have gone through periods in Michigan history where we have gone to extraction at any cost. Extraction of minerals, extraction of timber, at costs that were too high. We have come around now to understanding more about the trade-offs between extraction and protection. If we allow this mining district to occur as it's proposed now. The impacts to the Great Lakes will be immense and long-lasting, hundreds of years long. We now have an opportunity to put into law those things that will protect those waters. Sulfide mining is something that is not uh, something that is easily fixed. Once things go wrong, they go very, very wrong. There is a ballot initiative proposed for 2010 about protecting our water through setting buffer zones for mining around surface waters and asking a company to prove first that they can successfully do this and that they have done it someplace else so that Michigan isn't the guinea pig. It's not a ban on mining of any sort uh, it's simply raising the bar so that if this mining occurs in Michigan, we're not putting our drinking water at risk. It's not just one spot that's in the balance right now. Exploration is going on across the central and western Upper Peninsula, northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, and in Ontario. The entire Lake Superior Basin is being explored for intense mineral extraction right now. So the time to do something is now. I think of the coaster brook trout as a legacy species. It has an important history in the establishment of the fauna of, of Lake Superior. It was, it was one of the originals. I think we all want essentially the same future. We want clean water, we want clean air, and we want wild places that are still out there. Whether we go to them or not, we want to know they're there. I want you to remember, as someone who grew up in the state of Michigan, what Michigan means to you. I want you to remember those special places that you were when you were a kid. I want you to remember what not just the UP, but what all of Michigan means to you because um, this is our opportunity to make and keep what we remember going forward for our kids. And it's just important to remember, always remember what we love about the state of Michigan and keep it right. <laughs>